Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Session 2 Review, Conclusion and Homework presentation, Jesus reviews and concludes the Facing My Fear of Love and Change session and gives some homework to the participants for the following day. Recorded on the 9th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. One more hour and you're free. <laughs> it was less than one more hour, actually. It's going to be less than that. We'll just do a very quick review and give you some homework. And then I'll let you out of your chains and bonds. <laughs> okay. So what, what we'd like to do now is just revise our last couple of days. Remember our theme for the last couple of days has been facing our fear and resistance to love and change. So you can see that we had the four primary areas that we're, we're resistant or have fear. Those four primary areas are, you can just yell them out, it's fine. Faith, truth, truth action and emotion. That good, eh? So what have you learned in that process? What have you learned? There's Jennifer, there's down the front here, and then on this side, uh, Cardi, thanks, and then across to Joy, thanks. That they all go together. They that work better together. Yeah, it's, it's sort of pointless trying one without the other, isn't it? So one of these things is different to the other. You remember that from Sesame Street? Uh, well, all of these things are necessary. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cardi, thanks. Um, and to choose to engage my will. Sorry? To choose to engage my to will. To choose to engage it in these areas. So to, with regard to faith, what would we do? We'd choose to engage it how? So remember, re there were two issues with the faith issue. We said there was, we had a lack of faith, which pretty much everyone on the planet has, right? And then there's the resistance to developing faith, isn't there? Those are those two issues. What's the difference between those two issues? Having a lack of faith, where did that come from? Childhood, Childhood stuff. Okay. Resistance to developing faith, where does that come from? From, from the exercise of our will. Yeah. So, so we can see that it's very important that we use our will to develop faith. Right Now, the same applies to truth. Where does our lack of truth come from? Well, the world's pretty obvious. Although we're living in the world, the world's got a lack of truth, we've got a lack of truth as a result, that's to be expected. But our resistance to finding out truth, where does that come from? Well, it comes from ourselves, but what, what? let's be more specific now. Where is it actually coming from? If we go right at the back. Um, from our family of origin. Uh, partly. Yes, partly. And, and from our choices that we've made. Yes, and if you sum all that together, what's happened? It's now in your soul. This is the key thing, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to remember that. It's like, it's like inside of your soul emotionally. It's in there. That's the problem now. Because, it's, it, because all this stuff is in there, your resistance to truth is in there, in your soul. So how do you get rid of your resistance to truth? What do you have to do? You have to feel some emotion about your resistance to truth. That's the only way it's going to change, right? And then, so that, that then brings us to feeling some emotion. Now, what the majority of us do is we try to avoid or select emotion, don't we? So this is our problem is we're there selecting pleasure getting rid of pain, but, but what's, what are these emotions that are driving our unloving behaviour? They are all painful, are they not? So this is pain-based emotion, and if I am selecting pleasure and ignoring pain, then what hope have I got of ever emptying my bucket? None. None at all. So I'll carry around these emotions, this year, next year, year after, 10 years time, 20 years time, 100 years time, 1,000 years time, unless I choose to do something different. Now, God's laws are going to grind at you to change that. Right? The law of compensation will grind at you. The law of cause and effect will grind at you. And, it, and actually, we'll see in a couple of days' time that the pain will build up so much that eventually you'll be motivated through that selfish motivation that you have. 
right, to actually reduce your pain so that you can get happy again, and that will motivate you to make some change. But but you could you could make a different decision now, couldn't you? Rather than waiting for that to occur, it's far better to make a positive decision now than wait for years and years and years until the pain's so intense that you know it's very very difficult to deal with then too. So this is our major problem. We do not wish to feel what we believe is pain. Now, there's going to be two ways that we need to do this, obviously. Well, there's three probably if we analyse it, which we talked about. The first way is we have stored pain, right? Which is going to need to be felt if we're ever going to change our current condition. We also need to stop future pain don't we and 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 that's all about stopping sin isn't it by stopping sin and the only pain we cannot prevent is pain from the world although actually once you're at one with god you don't even feel it isn't that interesting but we can't, it, during the process, uh, prevent this pain from the world. So what do we have to choose to do with it? Yes. Feel it, just like we did with the store pain. So, so isn't that very simple then? All I've got to do is feel pain and I'll get better. It's pretty simple. <laughs> like, can't get much more simple than that to understand. Right. So now you can see that my attitude to pain has to be addressed, does it not? So that's what we're going to do in the two days after the break. We start looking at your attitude to pain, how you see it, what, what, what you're doing with it, things like that. It needs to be addressed, right? Okay. So our resistance to faith, truth, action and emotion is frequently also determined by our own selectivity when it comes to understanding truth. In other words, we frequently desire to not have faith and we don't want to face the truth that we want to not have faith because having faith may ter ha take actions, we may cause us to take actions that we're scared of taking, right? And the same applies to truth. We don't want to hear the truth because hearing the truth might cause us to take actions we would not otherwise take. Right? And you can see obviously that action is a big issue too. Like we can hear all this truth and many of you are doing this. You've heard this is truth. You're a bit fascinated with it, right? Can't help yourself sometimes. So you get a bit fascinated with the truth. You listen to the truth. But, but when it comes to acting upon it, yeah, now it's a bit hard, right? You know things are going to change. It means comfort zones are going to be challenged and so forth. Difficult, difficult decision to be made to actually feel what's really going on. And then this, this key point of emotion, and I can't emphasise it enough, unless you're prepared to feel all of your emotions, which, by the way, is the definition of humility. It's the definition of humility. Being prepared to feel all of your emotions, whether they are painful or pleasurable, is the definition of humility or part of that definition, right? So, so being prepared to be humble and just feel. And one of the things that helps me a lot to feel is I just remind myself, be humble, be humble, <laughs> be humble. You know, this feeling's coming up. Sometimes you feel like getting angry and sometimes you feel like getting upset with someone else and sometimes you feel like other things. Be humble. Just feel it inside. It, you know, feel it for yourself. Be humble. And there's not a single day that doesn't go past where I'm not reminding myself frequently during the day to be humble. Does that make sense? Because it's hard to be humble when you've got some big emotions in you that need to be felt and they feel quite painful to feel and and they might take a while to feel. It's just hard to be humble in the process. And the other thing is it's hard to be humble in the process where everybody's making fun of you, ridiculing you, and so forth. And as you know, I get a lot of that too. 
like with people just making fun of you, or he hasn't changed now, it's been 10 years now, why isn't he up there, right, what's going on, or what he's teaching must be rubbish then, and so forth. And so you get all this, like, and just be humble. Even be humble to that. Be humble, feel what it feels like to have that. Does that make sense? That's all we've got to learn how to do, be humble. So actually, most of the last two days has tr tried to address our lack of humility. Can you see that? That's what it's really tried to do. Just address the fact that we have resistance to truth, which is a lack of humility. We have resistance to developing faith, which is a lack of humility. We have resistance to it taking action because we're afraid of what the results will be and mostly we're afraid of attack. We're afraid of getting abused or ridiculed or made fun of or whatever else. And that's a lack of humility, just a lack of ability just to feel what you feel as a result of it. And feeling our emotions is all about humility. So can you see the relationship between these things and humility? Very important factor in your life. Yep. Okie dokie. Is there anything you'd like to ask at this point? Or do we, you want to say? You can say, Joy, sorry. Uh, what I was going to say is mm -hmm. that what I love is that if I address those four things, faith, truth, action and emotion, mm -hmm. then growth is automatic. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So, so if growth isn't happening, always come back to this and how you're using your will in regard to these particular four things. Right. And remember, these things are resistances to how you use your will as well, aren't they? So, so if you find, uh, you know, you look back six months after this. So many of you attended the 2014 assistance groups. And, and, and if you're honest with yourself, you'd look at it two years later and go, I probably haven't changed since then. Right. These are the reasons why you haven't. You haven't been dedicated to dealing with these four issues. That's the only reason why you haven't. Does that make sense? To me, that makes about my life simple. Uh, instead of getting all complicated about what emotion is, what emotion is, what's going on here, what's going on here, what kind of psychoanalysis analysis do I need to achieve? You know, what kind of you know analysis do I need of my f mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my parents, my grandparents, whatever, whatever. Blah 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 blah. blah. You know, like at the end, it really just gets down to this. It's like, okay, I need some faith. Do I have it? I need to be really loving the truth. Am I doing that? And remember, the truth is a lot about what the law of attraction is bringing to, the law of cause and effect, those laws. So facing the truth of that. Am I prepared to take any action here or just sit on my backside not taking action? What am I doing here? Am I, am I, can I see problems within myself that I'm refusing to take action on? And then... What about emotionally? Am I actually doing something emotionally? Am I actually trying to access emotion? Am I giving myself time to? Have I constructed a life where I have the time to and so forth? Right? What have I done in that regard? Do I, do I want to do that? So this, this is what's helped me a lot, to keep on, keep on the straight and narrow, which actually comes from a quote in the Bible that's about the way. Did you know that? Yeah. The, I was asked about the way in the first century and, and, and I said, look, the way is a narrow and straight path that leads to life and few are the ones finding it. But there is this large, broad path and the multitude find it and go off into destruction, self-destruction, actually. Right. And that's actually in the Bible. And so from that came this, from this, this saying, straight and narrow, beyond the straight and narrow. Yeah. And that's what we need to be here. If we were going to progress in love, we need to see this straight and narrow path and decide to use our will to walk on it. Right? That's what we need to do. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say about that? So, Monique, thanks. I just want to ask a question about um, what you said about humility that you reminding yourself to just be humble in the moment mm -hmm. and um, does that mean you have faith that 
you have the faith that if you be humble, it's going to be positive. Like I, I struggle to see how you always because it, like my personal experience has been having faith always results in progress. So and having having humility always results in progress. So to me, uh, like honestly. Humility is one of those things that I trust, like I trust, like love or truth. Yeah, but I just wouldn't it be once I have enough faith, my action to be humble would be automatic. How can they be automatic when your soul has got emotions in it that you are resisting feeling? I can't see. Of course, it would be automatic once you're at one with God. But 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 before you're at one with God, I don't see how it can be automatic without you actually using your will to remind yourself just to settle with your emotions, get connected with these emotions, you know, allow yourself to feel these emotions, be humble. I find it helps me greatly because it, there are times when I feel like, oh, I'd like to get angry, you know, and then I sit down and go, okay, be humble. What, what, if you're humble, what would you be feeling here? And then all of a sudden I get into whatever it is that... <laughs> that I should have been humble about in the first place. Right? It also helps me analyse my resistances. I go, okay, I'm not being humble here because I'm not feeling my underlying causal emotion. So why is that? Like, what, what's my resistance? What, what do I believe is going to happen? So it helps me do that as well. So why, if it's not flowing, yeah. so you ask why am I resisting? Yeah. And, and the re reality is, like, you guys, you guys, you do enough to try a saint, right? You do. Like, in terms of, like, you have to be a saint to be patient enough <laughs> to talk to you about something over and over and again for years and years and years, right? And, and there are times when I go, yeah, just be humble to that too. That, that was a question I've, ha I've been having this week is, you've said this since day one six years ago that I know of and yeah. you're still saying the same thing and you managed to change it all around somehow just for us to be able to finally get it like well I'm trying to simplify it for you but I've been trying to do that the whole time if you think about it you know we've I've talked about action I've talked about emotion I've talked about truth I've talked about faith every one of these things I've talked to you about many times before actually many times right what I notice, though, is the majority of people don't put things together. You know, we, we're very haphazard and illogical in our day-to-day -day life, so we don't put things together very well. So one of the things we wanted to achieve in these series of assistance groups is to pull a lot of information together and to just boil it down to some simple facts for you. Does that make sense? so that you could understand why things are stagnating and why growth is difficult. That's what we're trying to do here. And, and, and like, like, I love God's truth, right? And who wouldn't after you know it? Of course you're going to love it, right? But, but um, communicating God's truth with others is difficult. And, and the reason why is because most people are not open emotionally. So if, if you are open emotionally, God could just show you God's truth immediately. See, the way we communicate in the celestial heavens, if I just sort of explain that for a second, if you've got a person here in the celestial heavens and another person here in the celestial heavens, the way they communicate is not with words. So they don't talk to each other like you do. right? They don't need to because what they do is they transmit... Well, it's really interesting how it happens because it's like, it's like a movie but which you're actually in and feeling as well. So that's how you communicate. Right? Now, if I could do that with you, I think you would have discovered you know, what to do about divine truth much sooner. But, but the reality is on earth, you can't do that with a whole group of people who are just desensitized emotionally. So you can't do it. So what I've got to do is I've got to turn all of what I want to say emotionally, which I know to be true through my personal experience, into a language, English, which I'm not very good at, and, and then communicate that with you, and then you interpret my words the way that I intend for them to be interpreted emotionally. 
Now that's the tricky part, right? Because what it's going through, remember these are the bodies and then we've got the ears and I've given you this illustration before, right? You've got the ears of the people but the reality is inside of this process you've got a mind, right? And then you've got the soul which is where I'm trying to get this truth into so that you will act. You know, I'm trying to inspire you to accept this truth in your soul and this person has got mind and this person's got a soul and so if I'm the person who's the male there in this conversation and you, Monique, are the female in the conversation I've got feelings in my soul and I know that you're, I can't transmit those feelings straight to you I can't because you won't let me right? Is that because I'm not emotional or open to that subject? Not only that, it's also because you're not emotionally sensitive, you don't want to be emotionally sensitive, there's a whole heap of things you don't want to face the truth about to be emotionally sensitive. So God has the same problem with you. See, God's, this, remember God's soul, God's trying to communicate with your soul too, same, same issue, and, and, and God can't because you won't let him. And remember we said right at the beginning that if we want to get an education in love, I've got to let God communicate with me. I've got to let God somehow, but, but here it is. God's trying, but, but I'm blocked here, right? You're blocked here. You don't want to allow the communication to occur. So, so I'm trying to go, okay, there's a whole bunch of people who don't want the communication to occur that from God, so I'm going to have to use what I now have available to me, which is my physical body and my mind in the spirit body, to translate the material that I've got in my soul so that you, so I translate that into my mind, I then try to describe it in all these different ways and then what I do is I speak it with my mouth there, right? So I speak it, it goes out of there and into your ear. Now to that point there's no problem, <laughs> right? but, but your mind is driven by the denials of your soul. So, 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 unfortunately, this is what happens to a lot of it. It goes, <laughs> <laughs> right, it goes out and exactly, to nowhere. Exactly. Like, right, and you know that because you've often listened to one of my presentations a year later and said, oh, it was like I wasn't even there. <laughs> so, so how did that happen, right? <laughs> and, and that's how it happened. Right, because there's all this emotion coming from the, the soul that drives the mind to just even just turn off the physical body's brain in terms of processing the information even. But a little bit of it dribbles down. But the problem is your mind is now predisposed to a lot of emotional injuries and addictions and so forth. So now you go to go through the interpretive process. Now many of you initially went through the interpretive process and said, I get what he's saying, no worries at all. Right? And I get email after email saying, it's exactly what I've thought for 20 years. Okay, it's not exactly what you thought for 20 years. <laughs> You've got no idea what you thought. But anyway, this is what most people do. So, so then they live in this mind part for a while. Right? Using your willpower to change, living in your mind, trying to change, trying to... Now, after a while, you're running around like a... You know, it's like one of those mice on those wheels, right? Sort of running around, running around, running around, running around. And, and, and after a while, you look up and you go, what, five years have passed and I'm in the same spot, <laughs> right? Maybe I didn't understand it the way I thought, right? So, so then, after you realise that, you start facing some truth and starts to dribble down into the soul that's the process and that process is unavoidable given the human condition <coughs> yeah so sometimes I look at that process <laughs> and I go oh boy <laughs> this is a long long-winded process of communication that I'm not used to for 2,000 years and uh, and and honestly, it is, it is difficult. It is a difficult process. And many of you don't understand the resistance you have to that process, to absorbing truth. Now, now what I'm trying to do is allow your soul to open up towards God. That's all I'm trying to achieve here. Because once that happens, you go, ah, I now get something now, you see? Once that process happens. But... 
the key is convincing you to do it, right? Inspiring you to do it through your own aspiration. Remember, this is inspiration when you receive something from another. So this, I'm trying to inspire you through my own aspiration. I'm trying to inspire you by my words and my actions and everything else into eventually you gaining an aspiration to do this whole process for yourself. Once that we get to that stage, you don't need me anymore. Right? Which will be wonderful for me. I'll go <laughs> to some beach and, and do some uh, surfing or whatever. Yes, you'll be going through the same frustrations. <laughs> You're going, how did I bear that? <laughs> And you'll have some understanding of what happens. But the, the beauty of going through this process is eventually you connect to your soul, your heart, right? And then you'll start to be able to communicate through that method. You'll start to be able to feel spirits who communicate using the same methods and so forth. So the more that happens, the more rapid your process will become, your, your progress will become. So, so this is a wonderful benefit, some of the benefits that we'll, we'll look at later. But... But the reality is, at this stage, yeah, there is a fair bit that goes, like my mother used to say, in one ear and out the other. Mm. Money. Uh, just that's that was actually my question. Why, on a lot of subjects you've been talking about, I felt resistive, but the only things that ever go in or actually touch me are things I've actually done work on at home. Exactly. And I have experimented for myself. Exactly. And grown some faith and learned a truth about. And then I can go, yeah, I get you. But the rest, yep. is, it is in one ear and out, and out the, the other. other. It doesn't touch me. I'm, I'm here, but yeah. I'm not feeling any of it. So yeah. really, like, the key is then to go home. And, and do the work. And do the work. Go through the blocks on why I couldn't hear. Correct. And that, that requires your own aspiration. That requires a feeling coming from your soul, which is actually the use of your will. That's what it requires. And that's why your will is so important. Like nobody, even a person standing right in front of you, can actually in the end do what you need to do for yourself. Nobody can do it. Even if they wanted to. There's many times where I said to Mary, look, darling, I'd love to be able to do this for you. I can't. It's something you have to do. You need to choose what you're going to do here. Right. Is, is it so then the only way that anything, anything that you say actually goes into the soul, my soul, yep. or our soul is... Um, By removing the blockages for that thing to go in. Removing the blockages. That's right. And, that, and you've spoken about hundreds, thousands of different... Ways to do that. It, yes, and lots of different truths... And what's actually blocking you and all sorts of things, yeah. yeah. But what I've tried to do in this presentation, what we've tried to do, Mary and myself, in creating this outlines for you, is to help you see if you just engage the four basic resistances and you flip them over and you, make, you turn them into strong points. Right? So these faith, you know, we've got a lack of faith, that's the resistance. We've got a resistance developing faith. There's our resistance. But if we turn it over to a strong point and we go, no, I'm going to develop some faith here. I'm going to take some action. I'm going to be responsible for my faith. Right? And then the same with truth and the same with action and the same with emotion. Then we've got some hope to actually redress the issue and to also make some more like faster progress. And the beauty of making faster progress is we get the results faster and then our faith builds more quickly and so forth and that sort of creates momentum of its own. And then we mm. don't waste our time if we come next time or waste everyone's time by not doing any homework and it all just going in one ear and out the other yeah. again about again. the same things. Yeah. Like that's and, and you will look back in your life sometime in the future and you go, yeah, I heard that. I had to hear that 25 times before I actually heard it. Or I had to hear that a hundred times before I actually heard it. Um, and that demonstrated the actual resistance emotionally that was there to her, her hearing it. And that's why I've even done these presentations about how the soul works for you, so that you understand there's suppression, you know, preclusion and other factors of the soul and how those particular factors of the soul affect the operation and your ability to absorb new truth and so forth so that you can understand why it is even that you don't fully understand what's being said at times, frequently. 
Yeah, good. All right, let's give some homework. Hopefully the homework will help a bit of that dribble happen. That like a couple of drops at least get in there. <laughs> Hopefully you're not asleep at the time. <laughs> All right, so, so the homework's already in the notes, so you've obviously got that. How am I demonstrating that I am living by faith in my daily life? So, so here, here we're looking at, like, what are you actually doing to demonstrate that you're developing faith or living by it? What, what, what things are you doing daily? You see, what I see is that most people are avoiding daily examination of life. And the problem with avoiding the daily examination is that months or years can go by before you actually have a look at what's going on, you know. And the problem with that is that, is that change is very slow. And, and, and often if it's slow, we get pretty frustrated right, with slow progress. So how am I doing that? How am I taking action to become more loving in my daily life? Like what do I do? each day to actually make decisions based on love rather than making decisions based on pleasure pain like what what demonstrates that I'm actually making decisions based on love rather than just making decisions on pleasure and pain what what evidence is there then the question how am I demonstrating humility remember humility being the willingness to experience and feel all of my emotions so this includes my painful emotions what how am I demonstrating humility in my daily life so this is a matter of examining your life and going okay and um, am I really feeling my emotions or am I just feeling some manufactured emotions that I prefer to feel because I don't want to come face to face with what I really feel what am I doing that and am I emotionally absorbing God's truth like accepting it emotionally rather than just going, no, I can't reject that. Now, we had an example of that today when almost the whole audience was in rejection of my concept about how to deal with a rape, for example. That, that was an example of the rejection of God's truth emotionally. Outright rejection. Right? So you know what it feels like, so you let yourself feel that with other issues. Like when do you feel that same kind of feeling? I can't believe that. It's too much for me. And the fourth one, how am I demonstrating my openness to God's truth in my daily life? And, and in particular, look at these areas. Am I honest with everyone I speak to every day? Am I honest with myself every day? Am I just presenting my facade to people all the time? Do I even try to present, present my facade to God? Right? What have I been doing each day? Am I honest in terms of transparent? So it's not just this is the degree of honesty. Am I openly disclosing people what's happening in my life? Or, or you go away from a conversation, you say, ah, oh, you know, they asked me about this and I didn't tell them. Like, why did I do that? Why wasn't I just openly transparent? Obviously, I must have thought I was going to get attacked or I thought I was going to get ridiculed or something happened there and that caused me to not be transparent but then there are times when it's unwise to be transparent for a lack of love of self so in other words I've got to go okay and um, there are there times when I share information about myself when I know the other person is going to harm me when I know they want to attack me and I just did it anyway so it's an issue of love of self. So this is where I make the decision. I love myself, love others. I'd be truthful with myself, truthful with others. I don't share information with people who are just going to abuse me all the time. Right? And I, I, I might share general information, but not personal, my personal life with them. Right? Because that's, that would be unloving. It just it gives them more opportunity to attack me by spending more time with them. I wouldn't do that. So, so how, how am I acting there, like in that regard? Now, when we have the uh, when we come back for that discussion, um, what I would love to do with you again is to is to have sort of like a summary from you about what you learned about yourself in that process. Does that make sense? What what did you discover in this process? So while 
we need to see, uh, and, this is, and this process actually was recommended to you two years ago in the change talk on the first day of the assistance group, in terms of measuring change over time. It's very important that we learn how to measure change over time without judgment of ourselves. So without condemnation, without going, oh, you know, what a failure I am for, for not doing this or something like that. We just need to be honest about these things. That's what we need to do. So that's uh, your homework. Now, to, uh, two days' time, 10.30 uh, in the morning will be the arrival time for two days' time. And what we're going to talk about in two days' time is we're going to look more fully at how you develop the will muscle, right? To, to what's going on. So that's on uh, one of the days. And also we'll be looking at this pain versus pleasure thing more carefully to, to actually see what the issue is and, and why it is that we're just motivated by this single decision rather than making decisions based in harmony with love and truth or error and unloving behaviour. So we need to examine the reasons why we sin so that we understand ourselves at least. Right? So that we understand that our pro what our primary motivations are. And that's going to be the point of the last two days along with trying to assist you to feel like some personal motivation to use your will more fully, you know, in the world. Like try, trying to encourage you to, to stop sitting on your backside not acting and actually get up and do something, even if it's like, you know, doing something where you don't believe it, so you go off and act like you don't believe it and measure the results. Even if it's that, it'd be better than doing nothing. Right? And we'll talk about that as well uh, over, the, over those two days. So hopefully you'll enjoy our last couple of days uh, when we're together. But you've got a day off now, so enjoy your day off and the homework. And hopefully you might have a bit of sun tomorrow and you might be able to do some enjoyable things besides your homework as well. Thanks, guys. Thank